We are a group of four riders and five pack horses. Our riders are Harvey and Lorraine Kishef and Steve and Peggy Johnson. This is our horse pack adventure into the Canadian Rocky Mountains. We are staging near Grand Cache, Alberta, Canada. Sulphur Gates Recreation Area near Grand Cache, Alberta is our starting point. And from there, we head down into the Wilmore Wilderness Park in the Rocky Mountains. Traveling as far south as Ptarmigan Lake, west to Morco Pass and Cascade Lake, and north to Sheep Creek, which takes us back to the Sulphur Gates. We have pre-packed and weighed all of our gear for two weeks into our pack boxes. We just have to saddle and pack up the horses and we'll be ready to go. Everyone's pretty excited to get out on the trail and see what awaits us. Digger and Harley are two of our pack horses. Harvey is behind them leading Dale, who is also a pack horse. Steve is riding Will and leading their pack horse Rosebud. And Peggy is on Townsend leading their young horse Quincy. This is her first trip being packed. When we stop to make camp, the first thing we do is put up the electric fence for the horses. And because we have two groups of horses, we split the pen so the horses can't mix and bug each other. Then we all have chores to get done, setting up tents, hauling in water, getting a fire going, and get supper cooking. It's Lorene's turn to cook tonight. We were up at 6 a.m., ate breakfast, packed up camp, and are getting the horses packed up. We are checking Dale's boxes here, making sure they're hanging level with each other on the saddle. We all put our slickers on right away as it was showering first thing. The first half of the trail was mostly uphill, and the second half was lots of up and downhill with smaller steep hills as well. We crossed a few creeks here and there, rode in total about nine miles today. We set up camp at this hunting campsite. They had a frame set up for a tarp if you need it, and there were tables and benches to use, which was really nice. Because we are moving every day and out for 14 days, we minimized our gear and left tables and chairs behind. We crossed paths with another group of riders earlier today. They told us of an old cabin site not far from our campsite, so we went on a hike to check it out. There isn't much of a cabin left, no artifacts that we could find. It's quite small. We figured it must have been used for a trapper's cabin at one time. Harvey and Lorene's group of horses, except for Ben, a sorrel gelding that Lorene is riding. First is Jigger, a brown gelding. He is broke to ride, but he makes an excellent pack horse, so that's what we use him for mostly. Then there's Harley, a buckskin gelding. He's next. He is broke to ride as well and gets used around home quite a bit. Harvey is riding Reno, a bay horse. He's out of a Suffield Mustang stallion and a standard bred mare. This guy has lots of stamina. He could go all day and then some. Then Harvey is leading Dale. He's a seven-year-old gelding, broke to ride, and is learning the ropes of being a pack horse on this trip. We take our time while riding out here and don't mind stopping to have a break and let the horses graze a bit. We haven't been out this way before, so we're not sure of the grass and the campsites, so we let the horses graze in the meadows along the trail, just in case there isn't much grass where we stop to camp. As we were riding along the trail, we could hear water crashing sounds not too far off. So we went over and discovered this beautiful little waterfall area. We stayed here for a bit, took some pictures, filled our water balls, checked out the area and relaxed at the edge of the creek. Left the creek after a bit and a little further down the trail there was another small cabin site. Not much left of this one. We didn't stop. This one seems smaller than the last one we saw though.
This boggy meadow was just off our trail, so we pulled in to let the horses graze. Apparently, our pack horses weren't very hungry and decided it would be a good time to head back. We were watching them, though, and saw what they were about to do right away, so we managed to get around them before they got very far. This is our first view of the Jack Pine River. A little bit longer before we stopped for the evening, we set up camp near the junction of the Jack Pine River and Pauline Creek. The rain has been off and on all day now, and it looked like it was going to settle in for the evening, so we put up a tarp over both our tents, managed to get the fire going, had supper, and made some hot drinks to warm us up before heading to bed. It rained most of the night last night, so we decided to camp here another day. Our gear needed to dry out, and the guys wanted to try fishing in the Jack Pine River. We saw this bear print along the edge of the river. It seemed pretty fresh, so after that we made sure we had the gun nearby, just in case. We never did see it, though. It was good to have some downtime. Moving every day is nice. We get to see lots of the backcountry but it is a lot of work as well. We needed to move the next day. There wasn't a lot of grass left for the horses, so we packed up and headed south towards Ptarmigan Lake. Here we are crossing Pauline Creek. This creek feeds into the Jack Pine River. This whole area of forest beyond Pauline Creek has been burned off, making it hard to find the trail. We scoured the standing trees for possible blazes that they use as trail markers, but mostly we followed the imprinted trail on the ground. There were areas, however, that we had to backtrack and search for the trail. It got pretty rough on the horse's legs in some areas with all the fall and burned trees. Overall, though, we made decent time and arrived at Ptarmigan Lake with quite a bit of daylight left to set up camp. up our tents we had to settle for a spot near the edge of the water on the gravel and the horses pasture with some boggy grass on this side hill. We brought alfalfa pellets to supplement the horses feed if we needed it. Turned out that was a good decision otherwise we wouldn't have been able to stay here for a couple of days. Feeding some pellets morning and evening helped fill the horses up and extend what little grazing they did. Have. Bugs were bad here, so we set up this bug tent to have somewhere to relax, store our gear, and our food boxes in. We were up early one morning and managed to get a great picture of the lake with Rest Haven Glacier. Rest Haven Mountain is located inside the northwest boundary of Jasper National Park. The sky clouded up again by mid morning, so that was the only time we had a clear view of it the whole time we were here. We enjoyed our stay here at Ptarmigan Lake, but it was time for us to continue on our adventure. So in the morning, we had coffee, gathered our gear, packed up the horses, and made our way back through the burned forest to the Jack Pine River. After that, it would be all new trail again. trail up along a small creek. It was really rough going, not much of a trail in some spots. There were bogs, fallen trees that we had to cut off the trail. We ended up riding back and forth across the creek quite a bit for better traveling. It ended up getting late with no real camp spot, so we camped on the edge of the creek. There was nowhere to put up a fence to graze, so we ended up letting the horses taking turns grazing so they wouldn't take off. One good thing about this creek was it made the best coffee that Harvey and Steve had ever had. So they called that creek Coffee Creek. 
In the morning, we rode up into some alpine meadows, so we stopped to let the horses have some grazing time. Mount Talbot was beside us, and we headed further up to Mount Forget. Then we traveled along the meadow towards Mount Sprague. We had to take shelter in a patch of trees at one point because a storm came right through the valley. There were strong winds, hard rain, with thunder and lightning as well. And the rain continued off and on as we rode the rest of the valley down into Morco Pass. Luckily for us, the rain held off long enough for us to get camp set up. The rainbow had perfect timing. We were done setting up camp and letting the horses out to graze. We did get more rain, but once camp is set up, it can rain all at once. It's been a cool rainy morning, but coffee and pancakes and bacon warmed us up good. After breakfast this morning, we saw a caribou run through the valley just past the horse fence. That was pretty cool. While riding in yesterday, we passed some ponds and a small lake, so we're going on a hike to check them out this morning. Our camp is located just inside the BC border at an elevation of 5,652 feet above sea level. And this valley is the headwaters of the Morco River, which flows west and then south to eventually join the Fraser River. In the afternoon, we just stayed around camp. Harvey decided to shave and Will came over to visit, snooped around right into Harvey's face. Then, he went over to visit Steve to see what he was doing. He was being pretty funny today, quite the character. Harvey and Peggy are getting the fire going to cook supper. After we ate and cleaned up, Harvey and I went on a hike to check out the trail for tomorrow. We came across an old cache of gear, some horseshoes and nails, a badminton racket and a net with birdies, and a few other things. Obviously, some other campers have spent quite a bit of time out here. We spent the evening by the fire, and then we brought the horses in to tie them up and had an early night. We're moving camp tomorrow. We figured we've ridden about 60 miles so far. The morning brought frost, but the blue skies and sunshine were a welcome sight. While we were letting the horses go this morning, we had fun. Jigger decided to walk right past the gate and graze outside the fence. We thought, oh, that's okay, no big deal. He's all by himself. He won't leave. He went to graze on the trail just around a patch of trees. Then all of a sudden, he's running back towards us right through the fence. He spooked all the horses and they all came running towards camp. They stopped at the fence, turned, and ran back out to the far corner. They stopped again at the corner. We all grabbed halters. Harvey ran to cover the trails so they wouldn't go back that way. While he was there, he discovered there was a wolf on the trail, a big black one. So that's what scared Jigger. We caught the rest of the horses while the fence was being fixed, and then we let them go again. They followed us across the pen and hung out by camp for a while until they all relaxed. That got everybody's heart racing quite the morning. But it's funny, Jigger never walked past the gate anymore after that. We packed up camp and we were on our way by 11 a.m., heading higher up to Featherstone Haw Pass and beyond today. The views up here are amazing. We're crossing in and out of Alberta for most of the day today, stopping to admire Mount Job and the vastness of the mountain peaks surrounding us while we were up high, but the horse flies were so bad the horses wanted to keep moving. Rosebud had up to eight flies at once on her butt, she wasn't very happy at all, but we had to stop long enough to put Easy Boots on Ben. He's lost both his front shoes now, and it's rocky up here. So we got them on as fast as we could, and we kept going. Coming down off the pass, Harvey was in the lead, and he managed to see a wolverine scrambling on the rocks up ahead of us. We went through a few boggy spots and Ben lost one easy boot, but Steve saw it and picked it up. We rode through the valley and up to Forget Me Not Pass, taking a few minutes to enjoy the view here and there, but the horses were getting cranky with all the flies biting them, so we didn't stop for very long.
spot on Forget-Me-Not Pass was a highlight for us, we could see Casket Mountain across the valley. The trail has been unknown territory for us up until now, but we have been to Casket Mountain and Casket Lake coming in from Sheep Creek before, so this was our moment to celebrate that we did it. We completed the loop. Coming down off this pass, we rode across a snowpack, and once we got down a little further, we came across this beautiful spot with a lake. It's one of those places you stop and think, wow, it would be great to have a cabin here. Our camp is set up near Casket Lake. From camp, we can look back at the pass and see where we came down. It's kind of cool to know that we rode over the top and made our way here and we're back on familiar trails. This is Casket Lake. The water level is looking pretty low this year. Following along Casket Creek, we made our way back to Sheep Creek. There were a few hills to go down, so we had to stop and repack Rosebud. After that last hill, her pack had slipped forward quite a bit, so we stopped and repacked her at the bottom. We kept going and made it to camp at the Sheep Creek airstrip. All day, the pack horses were pushing us. Once we got onto the trail along Sheep Creek, they knew where they were, and the bugs were still bad, so it made it kind of tough today. We ended up riding almost 18 miles. Some horses got cinch shores today, so we put salve on them overnight. Keeps them from drying out and keeps the bugs off. We left the airstrip about 11 a.m., rode along Sheep Creek, and then through Dry Canyon, and that's about where the smoke started to settle in. There's lots of fires in BC this year. Harvey saw a bear taking off away from us today, and there were a few grouse and squirrels, along with the white-tailed deer beside the trail. The trail is mostly gravel now, and Reno has lost his two hind shoes, so we're keeping an eye on him and Ben. As we were along this muddy water, the smoke got thicker. Looking back down the valley, the smoke has completely socked it in. We arrived at camp along the Smoky River about 7 p.m., in all, we rode about 17 miles today. So this is our last day. We were all a little wore out after riding the last two days. The bugs were out early, waking the horses up and making them cranky first thing. We packed up and got moving early. We came across some people today, hikers and riders, and made it back to Sulphur Gates about 3 p.m. We figured in the last 14 days we've ridden about 120 miles total. It was a great experience. We saw some awesome places along the way. After resting a bit, we got all our gear and our horses loaded, and we were headed for home. Hope you enjoyed our adventure. Thanks for watching.